Thank you. Uh, please, uh, you please call the roll then? There are eight present. And Alderperson F um, Phillips and Trester are both excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of uh, our minutes uh, from the last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to a presentation. Uh, the 2017 Flight for Life Seeing uh, Call of the Year Award. Uh, I'd like to call up uh, Fire Chief Mike Romases and representatives of Flight for Life. Mayor, if I could ask for a short delay, the, the helicopter just took off. And Mike is on it? The group is taking their way overnight. Okay, <laughs> very good. We will um, put this off for a brief moment. And we'll go on to uh, mayor's appointments, city clerk. I mean, city attorney. <laughs> so we do have appointments. Uh, the mayor submitted the following appointment for your confirmation. Tom Spender uh, to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet at the near North neighborhood hall. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. And thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to a confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor? Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to mayor's announcements. Um, we've got a couple of things coming up this week in the entertainment area. The final Sheboygan Pops Band concert will be held at Fountain Park this Wednesday, the 22nd at 6.30. Uh, we'll also be scheduling the last Levitt Amp concert at the City Green this Thursday, and it'll start at, at 6 o'clock with a band called Invisible Cartoons, and the main act will be at 7 o'clock from, and the name of the band is Deli to Dublin. Um, Thursday, preceding the Levin Amp concert at 5.30 on the City Green, there will be an opening reception for the Pearl. Um, it's a prism emitting abstract radiant light, and this is uh, the newest uh, a part of an art and public places installation by the John Michael Kohler Art Center. And the Shaw Family Playground has a challenge grant in their fundraising campaign for the, um, the uh, new playground out at uh, Evergreen Park. And the grant deadline is coming to uh, an end on uh, the 31st of August. So if anyone's considering helping them out, uh, that'll uh, help them to achieve a challenge grant, and if they can raise $250,000 from the public, the grant will also match that. I see that everyone's arrived, so we'll go back to our presentation on the Flight for Life scene Call of the Year Award. Call up Mike Romas and representatives of Flight for Life. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mike Romas. I'm fire chief of the city of Sheboygan. I want to introduce Chase, who is from Flight for Life, and he would like to present our department and our city with an award. Thank you. Uh, at Flight for Life, we have three bases. We cover most of southeastern Wisconsin, um, and we do about 1,000 flights a year. And what we have is, a, is an award we call the Scene Call of the Year Award. And really, the purpose of this award is to recognize the truly outstanding efforts that, that our partners in care um, you know, exhibit on a scene. Um, what, what, but the way it works is throughout a whole year, you submit applications for scene calls you think that were truly outstanding. And then we have a panel of experts that sort of go through and, uh, and rate what they think of each call. And then we have, and we have a winner. And so I'm pleased to, to announce that uh, 
yet again, it came out of Sheboygan County. Uh, some of you may recognize that the, quite a few of these awards come out of your county, so it's something to be real proud of. Um, but the Sheboygan Fire Department won the 2017 Scene Call of the Year Award. Uh, what we look at is we look at three basic things. Safety is the most important thing. You know, we fly an aircraft and safety is what we think about every second of every day. We look at patient care, obviously, and we look at triage decisions and what the decisions that the crew on the ground made and how that impacted the patient. Um, this is a little bit of a tricky call, so I can't go into much detail, but I can say from a safety aspect, this was a little bit more challenging than normal call. And the fire department followed all procedures and protocols, uh, made sure they were able to get to the patient safely, transport that patient safely. Um, and then they had to land the helicopter, and that can be a tricky thing. Um, you may see pictures of us landing uh, in a field or on a, on a highway. Um, a lot of times we land places where we don't really want to land, like uh, we landed in a cemetery one time. So um, our pilots really like to land in safe areas, and the crew on that day had the great idea of landing us at St. Nicholas Hospital on their helipad. Um, this is a place we know, we have the coordinates, we know exactly what the obstacles are around our, and we can get there safely, and we can then utilize the security staff at St. Nicholas Hospital to sort of be, be even more of a presence to, to provide safety. Um, and then as far as triage goes, you may think that when you get that patient that needs immediate care to a hospital, you should just bring them right into the hospital. But that patient needed to go to definitive care. They needed to go to a trauma center with surgeons who could, who could help them as quickly as possible. And legally, once you bring that patient into the hospital, all bets are off. Now the hospital has to do their whole due diligence, and that it's just going to delay care much, much longer. So kudos to the fire department for having the wherewithal to not just take that patient right inside, but to actually care for them, do everything they could outside, and then, and then have us land and take that patient without the delays that would have caused if we had gone in. And then as far as patient care goes, I can tell you this. I don't hear from our crews too often. I'm the professional relations manager. If there's any follow-up that needs to be done, they come to me with anything. And I don't hear a whole lot from them. They're pretty content in what they do. They like to get in and get out and help as many people as they can. But on this particular call, I got a call from our medic as soon as he got back to base. And he said, hey, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what? He said, there's this guy, Roy. I want you to hook up him and his teammates. Everyone that was on that scene needs to get a Flight for Life t-shirt that, 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 that was there. They did a heck of a job on a very difficult patient. Um, I don't get those calls from those guys too often. So I knew right there, wow, this is an interesting one. And I'm really not surprised to see that it did win out as a scene call of the year. So I would, I'm really happy to present uh, the Sheboygan Fire Department with a scene call of the year. They get this schnazzy little plaque here. Uh, they get a landing zone kit that has landing zone lights, uh, eye protection, ear protection, things that help them land the helicopter as safely as possible, and then a $500 donation that goes to crew education and training. So um, it's my, my privilege to, to present you guys with the 2017 Scene Call of the Year Award. If I may say, say something briefly, um, on behalf of the fire department and the city of Sheboygan, I'm accepting this award. Um, I said before in a newspaper article, it's a team effort. Uh, it never is done by one entity. And I mentioned the police department. I mentioned um, the hospital for all their assistance, St. Nick's, um, our crews in the field, uh, even the dispatchers. Everybody, it's a team effort. If anybody drops the ball in any way, shape, or form, this doesn't happen. And maybe somebody passes away. Um, I was really impressed when Jason first met me and he gave, or he showed me the award and he looked me in the eye and he said, Chief, he goes, I'm not just saying this. He goes, your crew did an excellent, excellent job. And that just makes me really proud. I'm always proud, but these people just go above and beyond. Um, a few of the members that were actually on this one, there were four um, we're here, uh, three of them are here today. One's actually working today, but he's transporting a patient to a hospital in Milwaukee right now, so he won't be able to be here. But I would like to recognize them. Um, just raise your hand after I say your name. Uh, Lieutenant Jamin Ingalls, Fire Equipment Operator Chad Brandis, and Firefighter Paramedic Roy Bryan. And the last thing I want to say is Flight for Life. You know, you've been in business decades. You know, over 32, 33,000 runs without an incident or, you know, an accident or whatever. We're just one run, one department that you interact with, and it's been probably tens of thousands of times. So on behalf of all the fire departments in the state, paid, 
volunteer, uh, paid on call, career, everyone, I want to thank you for your service and supporting us, and you make us look good, and I thank you for that. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Linda Shimon. Could you state your name and address for us, please? Linda. Shimon, S-H-I-M-O-N, 1326 North 27th Street, Sheboygan. You'll have five minutes. Thank you, Alderman Svaglio, for helping me on this issue. The backflow in my basement has not been an easy event to deal with. There are several reasons why. First, it is difficult to deal with because the backflow should not have occurred in the first place. During the week of January 8th, my neighbor Clarence experienced a sewage backup. He called the Public Works Department to report it, but something went wrong. When employees were sent to the neighborhood to check up on the matter, they were puzzled. There was no house with that number on our street on their worksheet. They knocked on Vicki's door and asked her if she had experienced the backup. She said no. They did not locate the correct house because the wrong address had been posted on their work order. Had they located Clarence after his incident, the expert professionals that the public works employees are would have found and fixed the broken repair avoiding the February 3rd incident. The second reason it has been a difficult issue to deal with is, I heard a rumor that created the image of the city attorney pushing himself away from his desk, flippantly tossing the paperwork of the incident out to his desk and declaring, it'll be denied anyway. I say it's a rumor, even if not true, that rumor played over and over in my head as I spent hours pushing a broom to sweep foul liquid to the drain. And when my two cats and myself spent six nights at La Quinta Inn to avoid breathing the dangerous pathogens, and when I started organizing the many saved items all placed in cardboard boxes by the cleaning service employees, and when I spent hours visiting furniture stores shopping for cabinets and shelving units to replace the ones tossed because they were made of particle board, and hours selecting floor covering, the hours spent moving items back and forth from the main floor to the basement, and all rooms in the basement back and forth, as space was needed for the contractors to complete their work. The hour spent organizing the receipts and paperwork for the claim, then making sure the paperwork was organized and completed correctly. All the while, with this nagging memory of rumor of the image of the city attorney pushing himself away from his desk, flippantly tossing the report and declaring, it'll be denied anyway. The third reason is how it has affected the folks in my neighborhood. There was Eugene, needing to replace an 11-month-old furnace and the inconvenience of having to live in his home wearing heavy winter coats. When I visited him, his back door was ajar three inches so the pipes sucking the sewage from their basement could be positioned on the stairs and out the door to a truck. The temperature was three degrees above zero. And how Shirley and Jean, nearly 90, struggled to haul sewage-laden carpet up their basement steps to the backyard until they were too exhausted to continue and I had to kneel on a white trading card box so I didn't have to kneel in the one inch deep sewage so I could reach in with gloves into eight inches of goo and pull debris from the screen cover over the drain so the water could start draining. And how I had to live with items that belonged in the basement but were cluttering my main floor. And when I attended one of the two public works committee meetings, and heard about a lady who recently had had an accident resulting in her car destroying a traffic light, her attorney had asked that the city set the charge for the damage to be prorated after all the light was several years old. The committee member then advised full payment because as he threw up his hands and said, hey, we have to pay full cost to replace it with lots of nods and grumbled sounds of agreement filling the room. It is difficult to personally resolve and accept the denial of my claim knowing that the city was responsible due to a contact mistake and hearing that the city had no leniency when the mistake was made by the lady, even paying a prorated amount of any of the claim damages. This is an example of a governmental body legislating itself above ethics and good character. When I researched the payment history of municipalities on this issue, I noted that city employees could be completely responsible for the damages, but have protected themselves with a law. I don't understand how this law can determine the outcome of the city's action 
when a report had been filed prior to our event that demonstrated a sewer pipe failure, the same failure that initiated our claims. In closing, the error of, correcting, of correctly logging Clarence's address that week in January was just a mistake. A mistake is neither good or bad, it just is. But its consequences are good or bad. In this case, the monetary and physical effort range from less than $300 to my repairs north of $17,000. None of us are asking for payment of the value of items not replaceable, those we assign to the realm of fond memories. We only ask for the replacement compensation. Follow the incisiveness of the Public Works Committee member who, with all other members in agreement, advised that the lady responsible for damaging the traffic light pay the full cost of replacement. Please, in our case, pay the cost of replacement. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> Thank you. There's no one else this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. It'll include items 2.2 .2 through 2.20. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Thank you for that motion <clears throat> and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Rentfleisch. Uh, could we please exempt or separate out item 2.3. I'd like to have that be referred to the Finance Committee. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just uh, vote on 2.3's re-referral to the Finance and Personnel Committee then. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> then the other items in the uh, consent agenda are before us. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Alderperson Sorensen. Yes. Um, I don't know if we can discuss uh, this or separate this, but I just feel that the discussion is this is the not being the finance committee being the report that we're going to talk about from the decision of the committee. Okay, uh, 2.5 then is before us. Is there any s discussion on that one item? Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, could the city attorney please elaborate on the position that, uh, that the city took? There you go. So the city's position uh, is based on state law, which is that uh, the taxpayers of the city can only pay claims for which the city is responsible, where there has been negligence uh, on the part of the city or its em employees. In this case, there was no negligence on the, on the part of the city. Uh, in, in essence, there were, there were some causes for it. Uh, there were some upstream clogs caused by upstream uh, users. Uh, there was also uh, a collapse that occurred, or I don't know, collapse is probably too strong a word, but there was some uh, damage that was done over time, but that wasn't something that, that you know, can, can be discovered until uh, there's an issue. And in this case, there actually have been uh, quite recent uh, checks in the area uh, scopes uh, to, to look at what was going on in the area. So uh, the reason that uh, this this claim uh, was uh, denied, and not by the committee, by the way, because it's, it's below the threshold for that. The committee is merely filing the claim. Um, the reason for that is because there is not a, a, a claim that can be paid by uh, the city taxpayers. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Negligence of the department in terms of making an initial response to the problem in some way obviate the, the, the city's immunity uh, in this particular case? Uh, no, for two reasons. One is that um, the facts don't necessarily line up with as they were presented um, in the statement today. Uh, the other is there is no causation between the fact that there was a delay in discovering it and the actual damages. Isn't there a but for though? But for the, the problem of, of not addressing the first problem in a timely basis? No. Uh, likely had the, had the discovery occurred on the day that it happened, the, the events would have occurred earlier rather than when they did. And would Ms. Shimon have the ability to file uh, a small, 
it sounded like the claim was around seven thousand dollars. Right. She's been provided um, with a letter that that explains her legal rights mm -hmm. and her time frame uh, in that regard. And so she can file suit against the city. Right. Okay. Thank yeah, you. that time has already started because the the claim has already been denied. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, then uh, we'll vote on 2.5 separately. The clerk call the roll for Seven eyes, one no. Uh, the motion passes to file the claims. And then uh, going back to the original motion, uh, there's a number of documents that are before us. Is there any uh, discussion on any of the other documents in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eight ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Items 3.1 through 3.3 will be referred to various committees. And then under resolutions, item 4.1 is resolution number 71 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue authorizing, retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Walmart stores, Inc. versus the city of Sheboygan and authorizing payment for said services. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Sorensen. We'll turn your question over to the city attorney first. It's actually maybe more connected than you realize because our outside counsel has actually been appointed to the committee, the legislative committee that oversees that. So we've, we've hired an expert. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Alder person born. Thank you. I heard that this uh, latest uh, case with Walmart is, is going to be uh, piggybacked on 2017. Uh, my question is, uh, how much have we spent on this so far with this law firm? And is, is there any cap? Uh, is there any cap on what the legal, uh, legal expenses could be? There's not necessarily any cap. I don't know what we've spent. Um, I could have checked if, if you'd asked earlier today, but um, I don't know exactly what we spent. She's not sent in many bills. But apropos to this being a new lawsuit, uh, she has indicated that uh, she is already, uh, even though she can't answer the complaint, she's already working with our expert who has a report due uh, to basically include 2017 in all of that, hopefully at no additional cost. And I'm also wondering, uh, 
how much, well, is time of the essence on these cases, how much time does the city have to respond to Walmart? And I guess I'm wondering, this is probably gonna be on the front burner of the legislative session, hopefully in January. Uh, are we spinning our wheels by doing too much before we find out how it's gonna be adjudicated in Madison or where are we, th where are we with that? Well, they filed a lawsuit against us, so, and we have 20 days from the date they filed the lawsuit against us to answer, which is why it's on uh, to suspend, because we have a very limited amount of time to answer. So if we don't hire the outside counsel to answer, uh, we'll, we'll just simply be defaulted, or you know, I'll, I'll answer it. But, um, okay. you know, uh, we, we do need to, because the lawsuit is happening, we do need to have a lawyer involved, uh, and having her... Uh, add this one in just makes a lot of sense. And after we answer, uh, is there a good chance that this may not be heard until the spring anyway, or is, is this going to be handled pretty expeditiously? The time frame on the uh, prior cases is such that um, there's not go it's not going to be done by this spring anyway. Okay. Now, what you have to remember is that if the law changes, the law changes prospectively. It doesn't change backwards. Mm -hmm. Um, so that doesn't necessarily change things as far as the lawsuits that have been filed. It may, though, prevent future lawsuits from being filed. Could the, uh, could the legislature write the law that it would go backwards a couple of years, or they can't do or they can't? I can't imagine a way in which they could do that without a, a constitutional challenge. Okay, thank you. Alderperson Donahue. And I know we're still on the suspension motion, and we haven't really gotten to the, uh, to the uh, uh, heart of the matter, but since we're discussing this, I noticed in the complaint that they asked for reasonable attorney's fees. Are there statutory attorney fees, or is that just silly? I mean, they'll get $100 or whatever. Yeah, there's not, there's not statutory attorney's fees. Okay, yeah. so that's good news. Yeah. Okay. okay, any other discussion? <clears throat> Alderperson Sorens. Just one other thing since we're talking about this. Um, just wanted to remind folks watching at home uh, that uh, on the city, city Hall's Facebook page, there was a, a very good uh, bit that was shared about the impact of dark stores um, and that loophole and what it has on local municipalities. So if you're watching at home and you're on Facebook, go check that out. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other hands, I sense we're ready to vote on this. Would the clerk please call the roll? Is this on the suspension, or yeah. we don't have a motion? Because I, I haven't made a motion to pass. We're still on the suspension. There, is there any objection to suspension? No. I think we're just we're voting on the motion. Thank you. you should I need to make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any discussion. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Uh, items 4.2 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 103 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred RC number 80 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee, and General Ordinance number 25 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, amending the city's snow emergency and winter parking rules to provide for improved clearing of snow during emergencies, to improve efficiency in clearing the streets all winter, and give reductions in personnel and changes in procedures and recommends approving the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, do you know, uh, know what the final poll, resort, poll results were? It was on a next door. You know, that was presented to the committee, uh, and it's probably changed if people continue to, so I'm not sure the exact uh, results. Was it pretty overwhelming in favor of the numbers you had so far, or do you recall? Alderperson Wolf? Um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but there wasn't a lot of participation, but the changes that we made were basically uh, 
to move the hours from, I believe, 10 o'clock to, or from midnight to 2 o'clock to make it easier for shift change. And we extended the, uh, the snow emergency time frame to be a little bit um, longer so that if we were to receive snowstorms later in the year, you know, like in April, um, just as an example, it happens, uh, that, that snow emergencies could still be called. Thank you for that review. Any other questions? Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. And I think um, uh, another, you know, sometimes it doesn't snow in April, and some that was kind of discussed as well, too, during Correct. the committee meeting. Um, and um, Jason from Public Works also um, discussed about how that would give uh, the Public Works Department more more time for uh, the street sweepers to, to get ample time to get all that just extra debris in the city too, so that offers more flexibility for the department as well too, so. Okay, thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 104 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number three of 1819 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing executing and operating agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Power Pubs LLC regarding an authentic German beer garden concession in a specific area of Kiwanis Park and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Under discussion, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to make a, a quick comment. I think this is a, going to be a great addition. Unfortunately, it's going to be uh, next year when they'll finally open. But I just wanted to say that the city um, has worked very diligently uh, in the past many months working with the Power Pubs LLC in regarding the, uh, the development of this for our Qantas area. So it's going to be a great addition uh, for the future and growth for that neighborhood. Thank you. Under further discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to also alder, um, echo uh, Alderperson Wolf's uh, statements as well, too. Um, and Joe, I Joe, uh, just wanted to thank you and all the folks at um, the Public Works Department for working on this um, and the City Attorney's Office as well. I'm actually wearing... Uh, my Bavarian uh, flag pin today um, uh, because, you know, uh, this was kind of a back and forth with, uh, between the committee. This was a direct referral kind of at the beginning of the session. Um, so I, I'm excited to see this happen and come to fruition. Um, and I think that this will be a great addition to the city. So thank you very much. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I read, I read the, uh, the agreement with the, uh, with the provider and I thought it was a very good contract that you did, Attorney Adams, as far as uh, covering all the bases. I've, I've seen a number of these contracts over the years, but I think, uh, I think it's, it's fair to the city and it's also fair to the provider that uh, we're, we'll be getting some income, I, be, I believe 12.6%, and also there's a good security deposit and also seeing that they're going to be, be paying the utilities down there. So I think it's a good agreement all around. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 5.3 is RC number 105 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 59 of 1819 by all the persons in flesh born, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget for the Boots and Sports Complex study and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Reinflesch. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Reinflesch. Um, the funds for this are coming from our tourism fund, on reserve tourism fund, which came from a room tax revenue, so we're not spending any taxpayers for this. We're just what we're doing in the resolution is transferring the funds to the budgeted account. But the study to be done will be on the economic impact of the completing the Butson uh, Sports Complex, uh, which will be very useful for them and for us when it comes time to help raise funds for, for the complex to be completed. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Jim. Jim. Are you on 5.3? No, I'm trying to. Okay, because it jumped to 5.4. Did it? Okay. What does it say now? It's good. You're good. jumped again. Where are you at now? You just jumped to 5.4 on my computer. Now what does it say? I'm on 5.2 on mine. <laughs> on my computer it says 5.4. <clears throat> the little green triangle jumped to 5.4. Now you just I'm on 5 jumped to 5.2. Give it a second. It's going really slow. That's okay. Result for 5.2 yeah, well, and 5.3. Yeah. Well, and that one is, yeah, I don't know what. <laughs> okay. Do we take it the old fashioned way? Yeah, sure. let's, let's right. do that. This is 5.3, and this is to pass the resolution. <clears throat> Mr. Bourne? Aye. Mr. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Phillips? It's not here. Reinflesch? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Truster's not here, and Wolf. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 5.4, which is RC number 106 of 1819 by the F Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 60 of 1819 by all the persons who are in flesh and born, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget on wage and benefit transfers and recommends passing the resolution. All the person are in flesh. I move to we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. You didn't pop yet, but you're on 5.4. Yes. Yeah. It's 
because it's waiting for you. No. It says 5.4, but, you, but it, didn't, it didn't say it yet. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Did you get it? Did you get it? it? Well, now we've got it. Anybody else? Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not coming, so let's just do it. Let's do it the old. Did it go? <laughs> well, nothing's coming up on my screen, though. All right. Born? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflush? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Eight eyes. <laughs> Motion passes. Next move on to 5.5. Uh, RC number 107 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 61 of 1819 by Alder Person uh, Ryan Lindfleisch, uh, born, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget for police training and TID number five and recommends passing the resolution. All the person, Rindfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Born? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflisch? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is RC number 108 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom is uh, direct referred uh, resolution number 68 of 1819 by all the person Donahue authorizing the Sheboygan Fire Department to enter into an access and indemnity agreement with Cargill Incorporated regarding limited access to property for the specific purpose of conducting firefighter confidence, confined space training exercises and recommends passing the resolution. Alder person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor, to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Born? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflush? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is RC number 109 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 69 of 1819 by Alder Person Donahue authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of five police patrol vehicles prior to September 21st of 2018 and recommends passing the resolution. Alder Person Rindfleisch. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. This is to purchase vehicles uh, before we actually have approved the capital improvement budget for next year. But we need to get the purchase in because the vehicles are not going to be made in future years. And so to get the 2019 model in, we need to order them now. We won't pay for them. We won't receive them. We won't pay for them until 2019. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Born? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflesch? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Eight ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.8 is RC number 110 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred direct referral resolution number 70 of 1819 by Alderperson Ryan Fleisch and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget for police vehicles and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Born? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflush? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. 
Eight ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.9 is RC number 111 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred general ordinance number 8 of 1819 by all the persons Donahue and Ryan Fleisch repealing article 8 of chapter 70 of the Municipal Code entitled Sexual Offender Residency Restrictions and submits to the council with no committee recommendation. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would move to uh, re refer this to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on re referral? Alder Person Donna Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, what happens if this doesn't go back to the committee and it came here with and it came here with no recommendation? Does that mean that the uh, the existing the existing ordinance would just stay in place the way it is, or what City happens? City attorney, well, you would still vote on it, um, and whatever somebody made a motion to do, and you know that's that would be what would happen. Um, obviously, uh, if if it failed. There's still the opportunity to make additional amendments, and I think that's the reason to go back. I think the understanding is that perhaps as is, it's not acceptable to a certain number of alders. So it's going okay. back to deal with those concerns. All right, thank you. Alder person, Donna, you. Um, just by way of background, um, the committee has looked at this particular um, provision of the municipal code uh, that uh, has substantial room for improvement, uh, both in terms of efficiency and outcome. Uh, we had a very good discussion at our first meeting, and it would appear that our discussions need to continue, and we need to review and determine the most efficient and uh, uh, helpful way of continuing on with this. So that is the reason that we are requesting that the map the matter be uh, re-referred uh, to LHPS for further discussion. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for, can I just do a voice vote there? Yeah. Re-referral? Re okay, all those in favor of re-referral, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. That'll be referred back to LHPS. Uh, moving on to item 5.10, RC number 112 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 11 of 1819 by Alderperson Ryan Fleisch, reestablishing salaries of elected officials and recommends approving the ordinance. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I believe at the Finance and Personnel Committee, uh, these election workers have not gotten a raise. Was it since 2008? And uh, well, it's not an easy job. It's a long, tedious day. And uh, I voted in favor of it. Uh, city clerk informed us at Finance and Personnel that this would add about $4,500 to the budget for next year for 19. Is that correct? Thank so you for I, those I, comments. I, I supported it and I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? No. Okay. Bourne? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Reinflesch? Aye. Savaglio? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Eight ayes. Under uh, general ordinances, um, item 6.1 and 6.2 will re be referred to various committees. Under uh, matters laid over, item 7.1 is uh, RO number 85 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred and discussed the tax incremental financing district TID number 17 boundaries and project plan at the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on July 24th of 2018 and after due consideration recommends the approval of both the TID 17 and the boundaries and the project plan. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move, uh, make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Item 7.2 is RO number 86 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission to whom was whom reviewed and discussed the tax incremental uh, district TID number 19 boundaries and project planned at the regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on July 24th of 2018 and after due consideration recommends approval of both TID 19 boundaries and project plan. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, I'll turn it over to the city attorney for other matters received after the agenda was published. Thank you, Mayor. 8.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2019 and June 30th, 2020. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Uh, next is adjournment. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for, your, for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.